Yes, sir, General Henley, sir. Sorry to summon you at this hour, sir, but we have flash traffic, unidentified, highly unusual. I thought you should see for yourself. All right, let's take a look at it. There you go. at 2220 off the coast of Oregon. Repeated calls for identification go unanswered. Initial trajectory? South by southeast. What about other aircraft here or missile testing? Negative. As you were. Bearing is 0.319er. Target dropped off the screen at 2226 and touched down in the vicinity. You don't know that. Sir, we triangulated its descent and have concluded that it did land roughly 200 miles east of Lincoln, Nebraska. <sighs> My God. Well, that can't be. Those maneuvers would break any pilot's neck. All right, Lieutenant, I want you to start your written report immediately. You will use the radar tapes as supportive information. Negative. The object she tracked was a bolide meteor. And that's what the report would read. Excuse me, sir. With all due respect, Meteors don't rise or change directions. You saw it yourself on the screen. Lieutenant, I saw a bolide. The anomalous characteristic must have been due to a computer malfunction. I suggest that each of you check your equipment. I don't want to see this happen again. Captain, you will erase the radar tapes immediately. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. And you will instruct your people not to discuss this event with anyone. Understood? Yes, sir. This is Hanley, Code, Foxtrot, Tango, Whiskey, Delta, Tango. We have a confirmed angel. Repeat, 
confirmed angel touchdown. Midwest sector. Procedure zebra. Echo zebra. Now in effect. Just fine. Sit down right here. You just sit right down. Get you nice and warm. Right. Yes. Carl, get that pot of coffee now. No, you up. Oh my God. You all right? It's okay. It's okay. Take it easy. You're all right. You're okay. Now, where do you live? Have you ever seen her before, Bonnie? Never. And you have no idea what happened or how she got here? She hasn't said a word. You better get her to a doctor fast. I agree. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's all right. There's hospitals in Alliance. Alliance. That's right, Alliance. Is that where you're from? <laughs> Lady, don't do that. You have scared me to death. What's that? My name. You said you wanted to know my name. I remember now. Mary Wilkes. That's good. That's good. You, you think you could tell me where you live? On a farm outside Northgate. That's a good 30 miles from here. How'd you ever end up all the way out here? I don't know. Just... I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember. Please just take me home. It's okay. I'm going to take you home. All right? I'm taking you home. I think I at least ought to see inside. I'd like to speak with your husband. But he's not here. He's on a trucking run in Colorado. I'm really tired. And my boy's inside alone. Thank you. Okay, I'll file my report with what I got, but I want you to promise me something. Yeah. 
the minute you remember anything else, anything at all, I want you to contact the local police. I will. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, there's a uh, phone company truck outside my window here, and it's making a lot of noise. It's 3 o'clock in the morning, for God's sake. The business office is closed, ma'am. It opens at 9 a.m. I can give you the number if you wish to lodge a complaint. some help. It's one of my patients, Leslie Hahn. She's been having some very unusual dissociative episodes lately. Mm -hmm. What are you getting? Uncertain. She may have been victimized by early sexual abuse. I've got her on clonopin, one and a half milligrams twice a day. She seemed to be responding, but then I got a call early this morning about six o'clock. She was in a blind panic. She sounded manic, paranoid. What triggered it? Some story about being assaulted last night. Get this. She said it involved telephone repairmen. I think it might be time for some regressive hypnosis. Why don't you let me talk to her first? Give her my home address. Tell her to come by around 8. Okay. Uh, send him in. Morning, doctor. I've been wanting to talk to you. I understand you put one of my patients back on the street again. We've been through this before. You can't hold someone in a mental hospital just because they're acting weird and disgusting. We'd have half the city in here. The woman pees down subway gratings. She camps out in front of Neiman Marcus, chanting obscenities. She hit a rabbi in the head with a grapefruit. What does she have to do, Stanley? Shoot the president? Neil, you're a very talented man. But before you came here, the average stay in the East Wing was two weeks. Now it's 4.5 weeks. That is totally unacceptable. I know what my patients need. And it's not getting snowed on Hal Dole and being dumped on the streets before they're ready. Stanley, your system stinks. 
This medical center has operated successfully for decades, Doctor. Long before you showed up on your high horse. I have four people in emergency. I've got no place for them. I need two beds from your ward. Whichever ones, that's your choice. But by tonight. Is that it? That's it. Hmm. Better get a move on, Tim. You don't want to be late for school. Mom, when is Dad coming home? Soon, honey. Soon. What kind of jam you want on your toast? Strawberry. How soon? Well, he's going to be calling home tonight, so you can ask him yourself, okay? Leslie, I'm Dr. Chase. Please come in. I, uh... 
I feel scared sometimes. <laughs> like, like somebody's watching me, following me, <sighs> tracking me. I haven't felt like this since I was a kid. You told Dr. Torricello about this? No. Not about being watched. I was afraid he might think I was crazy. I don't know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I am crazy. Well, Leslie, I wouldn't be in too much of a rush to diagnose myself. Yeah, a lot of things could be going on. Dr. Terricello told me that something happened last night involving telephone repairmen. Yes. Yes. It scared me to death. I'm still shaking. Tell me about it. Um, I have a, a small house in Venice. And my, um, my boyfriend, Ray, He's a cop, and he, he was working last night, so I thought I would just go to bed early. I knew that they were coming to get me. I wanted to run. I wanted to... I wanted to scream. I felt like I was suffocating. I, I, I don't remember much else. But I do know that they got into the house. How? I don't know. I just, I can't remember. I don't know. Did you recognize any of them? Can you recall their faces? You don't understand. They had no faces. And that's the last thing I remember. Until I, um, I woke up naked on the couch. I was sick and then disoriented. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. I just thought something was wrong with the clock, but the clock in the kitchen, the clock in the kitchen had the same time. So I guess about um, three hours had passed. And you don't remember anything of what happened during that time? No. It's a total blank. Was there any sign of forced entry? You know, uh, doors, the windows? Mm -hmm. No. Everything was still locked. I start crying for no reason. I, I can't stand being touched, not even by Ray. He doesn't know what's going on. I don't know what to tell him. Please, Dr. Chase. Please. You've got to help me. Yeah, but your dad claims to be dieting while he's been on the road, so let's skip him this time, okay? Darn. Next time. Hey, Miss Hi, Hubs. Jeannie. How's school? Boring. Hey, Timmy, how the Dodgers doing? No pitching. Can't win without pitching. How can we like them? Doesn't everybody hate them? My Aunt Lee took me to a Dodger game when I was a little kid. Oh, way back then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> your nose please not since i was a kid oh yeah i remember that were you uh, experiencing uh, headaches before this no occurred? no runny nose swelling no it, infection it just happened 
Huh. Out of the blue. All right. Well, well. What are we here? What? You try and hold. Real still. Do you see Mary. something? Hold real still now. Something in there? What is that? I'm the foggiest. Looks like uh, almost like a little pellet. Or it could be part of a larger object that's broken off. Any idea how this could have become lodged in your no. nasal cavity? I haven't. No uh, accident. You haven't fallen no. down or anything? No, nothing. Hmm. Most peculiar. The nosebleed probably resulted from the shifting of that pellet. But there might be more permanent damage. There's no telling how long that thing's been up there. I'm sure it's nothing serious. There's no infection. But I would try to find a specialist the next time you're in Omaha. I'm going to visit my sister soon in Los Angeles. Well, I hear tell there's a doctor or two in that town as well. Antique show. Think we can unload it? Rita, that is really, really terrible. What do you think, Leslie? mind if just once you'd let your guard down and let me in. Just once. I do let you in. No, you don't. I mean, we've been together nearly a year now. Every time I get too close, you pull away. <laughs> You're doing it right now. I'm, I'm sorry, Ray. Sorry. It's just that I'm... I'm so tired. I worry about you. I, I don't want you to. I do. Look, I gotta be getting back. Okay. Leslie, you sure you want me to come by tonight? Yeah. I, I'm sure. Okay. I'll see you later. Okay. Thanks for the flowers. Excuse me! 
are you men doing here? Geological survey. Hey, hey, I want the truth. What are you doing here? I told you once, lady, a survey. You're a liar! You know what I think? I think you're nuts! You got a zoo here, Doc! Zoo? I mean, really! What are you talking about, a zoo? Hey, what the hell's the matter with you? A woman who thinks she's a wolf? A guy who talks to General Patton through the heating ducts? Who let these wackos in here? Wake up and smell the coffee, hey. folks! Hey! What's your mouth, stupid? Stupid! Mr. Wachsheimer, we all have problems. We're trying to help one another. Now, just, just help us out and let Jim take you back to your room, please. Thank you. Stop right. I know. I shouldn't say that. I know. I know. All right, people. That's it for today. Please leave your work on the table and be sure your name's on it. Uh, Mr. Randall? Mr. Randall? Would you please leave your watercolor over here? Sure. Why not? See? See who... Hmm. I don't have much of an art career waiting for me, do I? I think it's very interesting. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I like him. <laughs> I like him, Doc. <laughs> he thinks I got talent. Don't tell him that's the only thing I know how to paint. Do you want to buy it? Oh, come on. I, I got, a, I got a, a trunk load of them in my locker. Not today. No, huh? Yeah. Dwayne. Dwayne. Come on, baby. I'll walk you home. This is the only thing he ever paints. I've got Leslie's test results. And? All normal. Yeah. That's good news. Neil, she's becoming more and more panicky. She's obsessed with those missing hours. I think she's ready. Okay, let's give it a shot. Set up a session at my house Thursday night. They're coming for me. I can see them. They're coming. Who is? Who are they? I don't know who they are. I don't know. What do you want? I'm afraid of them. Please don't touch me. Don't be afraid, Leslie. Don't be afraid. This is not happening now. This is all in the past. Please stop them. <laughs> 
Leslie. Stop. Leslie, close your eyes. Close your eyes, Leslie, now. This is not happening now. It's not happening now, Leslie. This is all in the past. You're safe. You're here in my office. They can't hurt you, do you understand? Yes. Good. Because at the count of three, I want you to look at them and you'll be able to see their faces much more clearly. I don't want to no, look Leslie, at them. Leslie, remember. You're not there. Aren't you ready? Yes. Okay. One. He's thinking. He knows what I'm thinking. No. Please don't. He's sweating my legs. No, please. No. Please don't. Please don't. It's not happening now. This is not happening now. I'm gonna count to three. And when I do, you will wake up. One. You're back in that restful, beautiful, peaceful place again. Two. You're relaxing. You're relaxing. Three. You're awake. <clears throat> so how do you feel? Uh, I... I don't know. Hmm. These people you told us about... Can you, uh, can you draw me a picture of them? I can try. Please tell me what the hell is going on. Who, who broke into our house the other night? Aliens? No. Ghosts? No, of course not. No. Now, something happened. 
It may not have happened the way she saw it, and it may not have happened that night. Are you saying some kind of sexual abuse? Uh, possibly. Yeah. A childhood assault, rape, uh, maybe even incest. It's just too painful for her to remember, so she buries it. Instead of seeing the true assaulter or assaulters, she sees something else. See, her mind is not quite ready to accept what it really was. Not yet. You have to be patient, Ray. You have to understand what she's going through. You okay? Yeah. Feeling better? Yeah. Good. You asked me who they were, Dr. Chase. I don't know. But I do know what they're after. It's me. The piece of me. My skin. My blood. That's what they want. And they're going to be coming again. I know it. You can't just look at one symptom. You have to see the whole picture. With all of her anxiety, she's still a solid, functioning, integrated person. If she were psychotic, she couldn't have been hypnotized so easily. Really? Then where did all that stuff come from? Aliens in spaceships? Little gray people with burning black eyes? Wait a minute. She's making this up, right? Well, I'm quite sure she's not consciously lying. Her emotions are very real. Have you ever encountered other cases of missing time? Other cases? There was a guy, uh, Beach or Leech or something, and he was making the rounds a while back, asking questions about the same sort of thing. It was all very similar to your case, missing time. Uh, UFOs? Yeah, I think it did involve UFOs. Perfect. That's all we need. Well, I think you should at least speak with the man. I'll search through my files, see if I can come up with his name, and if I do, I'll put him in touch with you. We get to see Daddy tomorrow. Right. Check for monsters first. Okay. None in there. There's none over there. And none under there. There are no monsters to be found. The little boys can close their eyes and drift away. Okay. Wait, could you leave it on? Yes. Okay. No. Okay, Silent Sam, you want to talk about it? Nothing to talk about. Aren't you sleeping at night? 
What's wrong, Tim, huh? I know something's bothering you. You can talk to me. Dad! Dad's back! <laughs> There's my big man. Come on, come on. <laughs> oh, boy, I missed you. Missed you. Who's this right here? <laughs> Put a little on it. There you go. There you go. You can fly ball. Fly ball, get under it. Had a boy. Had a boy. Had a boy. Ooh, looky there. <laughs> the prettiest girl in the county. And I wonder who she's going out to dinner with tonight. Well, I might not be if you don't get yourself in and get changed. I'll be in there in just a few minutes. Okay. Do you have to go out tonight? Hey, Champ, I gotta show your mom a good time once in a while. Besides, you ought to be happy. Sharon's coming over to sit. Atta boy. I don't care. I don't want you to go. Hey, 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 hey. Now, son, we, we've talked about this. Now, you know your mom and I need some time together. Timmy, this isn't like you. What, what is it? What's the matter, son? It's... It's Mom. What about Mom? She scares me now. Come here. Things have seemed a mite serious since I've been home. I had a talk with Timmy. He says things haven't been right with you. He's, uh... Well, the boy's scared is what oh. he is. Well, he's scared. It must have been a trip I took to see Doc Holton. And... What trip to see Doc Holton? I had a nosebleed, and he was with me, and, you know, I mean, it was just a nosebleed, but he was scared, probably. And why was it you didn't tell me about that? Because it was a nosebleed. It wasn't anything. I'm going to go have it rechecked when I go to visit Lee. Mm. Honey, why are you so nervous? <laughs> What's happening? Nothing's happening. Don't get upset about well, it. Don't get upset. It's okay. That's not what you're thinking. Well, it's not. I wouldn't lie to you about that. Honey, I know you wouldn't. But I want you always to remember what I told you. If old troubles do come back, this old boy is going to stand next to you no matter what. Okay? You know something? I just got a great idea. Did you? Mm-hmm. Up here in years. Well, then I say we're overdue, huh? <laughs> huh. Well, times sure have changed. I can remember when you had to fight for a spot out here. <laughs> it's a school night, remember? Yeah, well. That never stopped us.
Um, it's a quarter till. We best get going. Mm. But I want to come back here again. Makes me feel like a kid again. What you looking at, honey? That star over there? It's not a star. Stars don't move. Well, it's probably an airplane or something. What is it? What is it? Honey, what are you getting so upset about? It's it's only No, a... it's not. Oh. Honey. They're coming back. Who's I mean, coming back? There's they no... always come back for me. Please. Darling, settle down. It's all right. No! I won't let them take me. There isn't anybody coming. No! Mary! Mary! Expecting someone? No. You must be Neil Chase. Ah, you must be um, what? Wife? A girlfriend? Daughter. A daughter? Oh, the man has such excellent genes. I haven't eaten yet, I hope. Bought some Thai, my treat. Now, uh, this way to the kitchen, I presume? Ah, Caesar salad. Perfect. It's just as if you knew what I was bringing. Would you mind telling me who the hell you are? Ah, oh, yes. Where's my head? Of course, I know you, but you, of course, do not know me. My name is Addison Leach. But what's in a name? Still doesn't tell you what I do, does it? I'm a ufologist. My speciality is abductions. That pretty little Japanese doctor at the hospital contacted me and told me of your interest. I figured since I was springing for the grub, you'd be delighted to see me. Well, I'm here. You're here. I'm hungry. You're hungry. None of us have eaten. That's synchronicity, if you ask me. So why don't we have some dinner and I'll wise you up to some of the things I think you ought to know. What do you say? They occur with a certain regularity, but nobody pays any attention, except for a few of us who know better. Have you learned enough to know better, Doctor? If you mean, do I believe in flying saucers? No, absolutely not. Well, you seem like an intelligent man. You'll change your mind. The phenomena is worldwide, you know. I've investigated sightings from Senegal to Manitoba. The abductions in the Congo are virtually identical to the investigations you've been making here. I'm not investigating abductions. Oh? Missing time. Little gray men, large eyes. Medical probes. Sounds familiar? Take a hundred sightings. Sixty aren't even reported. Twenty-five are honest misidentifications. Ten are BS of the National Enquirer variety. And the remaining five? Ah, the remaining five. Amazing, incredible, totally unidentified and entirely real. I've been on to abductions for years now, long before they became fashionable. Look, I didn't just come here to have dinner and have a few laughs. We need each other, Doctor. How do you figure that? I've been hosting regular meetings of abductees in my house, a sort of group therapy session, if you like. We are in dire need of a professional, someone who can help heal them and lend credibility to their plight. You just don't get it, do you, Leach? No. I'm not interested in UFOs. I didn't like fairy tales when I was a kid. But one of your own patients is an adoptee, Doctor. 
You can look for answers in the stars, Mr. Leach. I'll find mine right here on Earth. You know, I've never understood you so-called men of science. If something comes along, exciting, and, and, and wildly important, and you turn your back on it just because it doesn't happen to fit inside your little box-like view of the universe. I don't bother, Doctor. I'll find my own way out. Good night, young lady. Scientists, you're cowards. I kind of liked him. He's funny. You're funny. What do you think, huh? I bet you're hungry. What do you say to a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and a big glass of milk? Yeah. Can I get you some iced tea, Lee? Oh, that sounds good. It's really hot today. I think we can go swimming. I still have no idea how I got to that diner. I have no memory of it at all. Had you been drinking? No. I haven't touched a drop in years. I haven't... No. It was different, Lee. This was different. I think I'm going crazy. Oh. Do you remember when we were little, we heard that tornado warning for the next county coming over Dad's radio? Yes, I remember. Every time the wind blew and the house creaked, you'd get the jitters. <laughs> Yeah, I was really scared. For days, I kept looking out the window, waiting for the funnel cloud to appear. <laughs> but you weren't scared at all, remember? You got me through it, you know that? <laughs> you did. It was like that a lot when we were growing up. Even though I was the older one, I always knew I could count on you for strength. That's not the way I remember it. Well, that's the way it was. You were stronger still are. That's why I know you'll come through this okay. Whatever it is. Oh, Mary. What? Your nose is bleeding. Here. Oh, not again. Look, I don't know about all this other stuff, but we better get this nosebleed thing checked out. Come on. The doctor will be with you in a moment. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. Wilkes. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Rakar. Hello. Yes. I understand you're having trouble with your nasal passages. Yes. Some periodic bleeding? That's right, yes. Hmm. Has anyone looked at it in your hometown? Uh, no, not really. Please.
Well, let's see if we can discover what the problem is. Please. Okay. Please, try and be still. Sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. All right now, Mary. This shouldn't take too long. You did say you had no past surgery. That's right. We're sure of that. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because your x-rays show quite different. What? <sighs> I'd like to know who did it. He's damn good. The best I've ever seen. Did what? I have never had any surgery. Mrs. Wilkes simply couldn't have happened without your knowledge. Will you please tell me what on earth you're talking about? Extremely complex nasal surgery. Performed on you uh, several times. Most recently within the past six months. Ray? Ray, this is your day off, right? Listen, I think you'd better come get Leslie. She's not well again. Yes. Yes, take her to the doctor, Ray. This has gone on too long. Good. All right. Bye. Got your test results. There's a nasty virus going around. Fever, chills, occasional vomiting. Oh, please, don't remind me. But you haven't got it. Congratulations. At least I hope you'll think it's good news. You're pregnant. Pregnant? Are you sure? You want to see for yourself? Yeah. Hold it. Listen. <laughs> Remarkably vibrant little heart. I'd say you've got quite a powerful child on your hands. How do you feel? Ah, uh, confused. Uh, let me ask you, um, that picture on the television screen, that, that's not the actual size of the baby, is it? Yes, it is. You're well into your fourth month. Oh, no, no. Well, this has got to be a mistake. It's no mistake. You're due about the second week in April. But Ray and I, we... For a while now, we've hardly been... And we, we've been so careful. I, I never missed a period. You've probably been experiencing some heavy spotting. It's nothing to be alarmed about. We'll keep an eye on it. But from this point on, you've got to remember to take extra good care of yourself. Okay? Yeah. I can't believe it. I can't. <laughs> there you go. Looks good. You know, I'm amazed the way you look after me. Hmm. That's what I'm here for, lady. Mm -hmm. That's good. After my divorce, 
I, I, I never thought I'd let any man ever get close to me again. And you've been so patient, you know. I think that's what I'm most grateful for. Leslie, I really think we should get married. And we're gonna have a child. I love you. And just... Just think about it, okay? still work and I thought I'd better call. Mm. It's VIP time. Yeah, I heard. The woman that does the uh, cable sports? Yeah. Uh, what's the problem? Brought her sister in a little while ago. Completely out of control. Hysterical. Crying. I gave her a one milligram shot of Ativan. Mm. How's she doing? Oh, she's still pretty upset. Seems she had this nightmare that really scared the hell out of her. There's also recent history of emotional problems. Where is she? Miss Holland, Mrs. Wilkes, this is Dr. Chase. How are you doing, Miss Holland? Nice to meet you. I really appreciate you coming, Doctor. Sorry. I didn't know where else to take her this time of night. I'll be at the desk. Thank you. So how are you feeling now, Mrs. Wilkes? Better. Good. Why don't you start by telling me about that nightmare? Okay. I, there, I was in this big empty house, and there was this awful dog. The sedative should help. She's had hardly any sleep. That's aggravated the problem. How worried should I be? I don't know yet. When they brought her back from the diner, did she have a gynecological? She didn't say. Is that what you think happened? She was raped? Well, they could have taken her from the house, assaulted her, and then left her on the highway. That would explain how she ended up 30 miles away. But why wouldn't she remember it? It's a safety mechanism. The mind shuts off. Mm -hmm. But we may be looking at a whole different set of problems here. Do you think you could see her again? How long will she be staying with you? Till Saturday. She goes back on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Well, I have an office in my home. Bring her by tomorrow night after dinner. <sighs> see what you can find out. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. Sorry about the crowd, we couldn't get a sitter. <laughs> That's all right. Dr. Chase, say hello to my favorite nephew, Timmy. Timmy, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Come on in. How are you, Mary? Fine. Good. Please. Well, I guess we ought to find something for you to do, huh? What's your favorite sport? Baseball. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I could have guessed that. 
I, uh, I think I've got something you're going to like. Timmy, you are a lucky guy. You're going to love this. Yeah. Look at that. Oh. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Awesome. It's the best collection this side of the Mississippi. Hmm? I had it since I was about your age. I think that should keep him busy for a while. These dreams are flashes where you see the dog. You know, there was a dog. Used to come by my house when I was a little girl. Would stand outside my window watching me. Would it do anything? I mean, did it ever try to attack you? No. No, I keep thinking about it. Like maybe it wasn't really a dog. But what do you mean? I don't know. Like maybe it was something else. I like what? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Can you help me? Is there some way to find out what's happening to me? Well, if you're willing, Mary. We can try some hypnosis. Whatever. Whatever it takes, I have to find out what is happening to me. All right, Mary. I want you to let your mind drift back to the night of September the 3rd. You went to bed early. You were sleeping soundly. You were sleeping very very soundly. You're in your bed. Very, very relaxed. There's a blue light outside my window. Can you see the clock, Mary? Mm-hmm. What time is it? Quarter after twelve. something in my nose.
That is absolutely incredible. I know. Their stories were almost identical, in intricate and specific detail. That's why I've got to know more about Mary. Are there any more similarities? Maybe there's something in your family history. What do you mean, like what? Well, you're her older sister. You might know something that she's forgotten or repressed. I mean, things that are so frightening that a young girl simply can't bury them in her memory. You're talking about incest, sexual abuse. I know these are hard things to talk about. Nothing like that ever happened in our family. I know that. But these visions, these things you see. You know, you keep using these words. I mean, suppose they're not visions. What else could they be? Why can't you accept the possibility that it might actually be true? Lee, that's fantasy. UFOs, spaceships, alien creatures? It's against all the laws of physics. What we know about reality itself. Yes, what we know. What about what we don't know? The same thing's happening to my sister that happened to that other woman. And you can't explain it. That's reality. Musial. Haha. <laughs> Boy, he sure doesn't look like he can hit like that. Stan the man, they called him. Oh, that was one of the greatest hitters of all time. He was the greatest. Here you go, two lemonades. Thanks. Look what Neil gave me. Oh, wow, his favorite ex-Dodger. Where'd you get this? He was a patient of mine. Really? We found out that hypnosis can't overcome a good curveball. <laughs> well, you are going to spoil him. How come every time a kid is given something good, some grown-up always has to say, you're going to spoil him? Because that's our job. Lee? Yeah? I can't find Timmy's sweatshirt. Oh, okay, I'll be right there. You two stay out of trouble. What does she mean, stay out of trouble? That's the way girls talk. Mm. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, I love these old cards. Klazuski, hey. Now, there was another hitter. This guy, he looked like a football player, this guy. Huge guy. What are these? Hey. Did you draw these? Yeah? Hey. That's very good. That's terrific. Hey, you are an artist. <laughs> What are these? The monsters. The ones that come into my house. Huh? You mean in make believe? No, they're real. Oh, how do you know they're real, Timmy? Have you seen them? No. I hear them sometimes at night when they come from my mom. Talk about it? Hey, hey, we're pals. We can talk about anything. Huh? And there are always creepy noises at night in old houses when the wood settles. No sounds you heard? It has nothing to do with anyone trying to harm your mom. Listen, old pal. You don't have to be afraid. There's no such thing as monsters. So they can never harm you. You promise? I cross my heart. Cross my heart. I can't thank you enough. There's no need to. I feel sort of stupid, but I i don't know what your fee is. I don't know what no, I owe you. You just take care of that boy and feel better. I'm sorry I couldn't come up with more answers, but I promise I'll keep on it. You've got my number. If you need anything, call me, okay? Bye.
There's my Hi. big man. How you doing? Hi. Did you miss Daddy? Yep. Well, not as much as I missed you. Oh, honey, welcome. Uh, I brought the limo for us. Anyway. <laughs> Covers up tight tonight. It's gonna be cold. Good night, son. You sleep good. I will, my dad. Good night. See you tomorrow. You want me to keep this on? It's okay. You can turn it off. It looks worse than it is. He's just a little dehydrated. Any idea what could have caused it, Doc? With kids, nosebleeds are not that uncommon. Could be as simple as a change in climate and altitude from the trip. Did you f find anything else? You mean like with you? No, nothing like that. He's going to be fine. Joe, relax. You'll have him back in the morning. Come here. No more secrets. Now we're gonna go home and you're gonna tell me everything. Right. Everything? Okay, let's go. Uh, I, I don't understand. Why'd you keep this from me? I didn't want you to think I was crazy. We well, are. Uh, First thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to call the police. I'm gonna... Joe, it's not going to do any good. Damn it, Mary, don't tell me that. I mean, somebody takes you from this house and does God knows what to you, and you tell me the police can't help? I told you what that psychiatrist in L.A. said. Mary, I love you. And you know that. And I'd do anything for you, but honey, please, please don't ask me to believe in little gray men. Something is happening to me. 
And something is happening to Timmy. And whoever is doing it is going to come back. I know it. So that's the fancy L.A. shrink. He's huh? here to help us, Joe. Mary. Mary. Thanks for coming. This is my husband, Joe. Joe? Yeah, uh, glad you can make it. How is he? What do they want with him? He's just a little boy. Lee, I've never seen the boy act this way here. Let me get that. Uh, I mean, he won't talk. Uh, I know he's all right, but he won't even get up out of bed. Hey, Tim. Look who's here. It's Dr. Chase. Hiya, Slugger. How you feeling? He came all the way out here with Aunt Lee. Just to see you. Aren't you going to say hi? I heard you had a bad nosebleed the other night. How are you feeling now? Hey, what's the matter, Timmy? What's wrong? You said they weren't real. What do you mean? You know what I mean. No, I'm afraid I don't know. Why don't you tell me? Ask her to tell you. Tim. No, I was calling you. I was yelling and yelling and you didn't even come. I know, baby. I tried, but I couldn't get in the door. They hurt me. Why didn't you stop them? They hurt me. I'm sorry, Tim. I'm so sorry. Well, I'm sorry, folks, but there's no way I'm buying this UFO business. Come on, Joe. Open your mind. People have spotted too many strange lights in the sky to just disregard it out of hand. Open my mind. Father, help me out here, would you? Would you tell the lovely young lady here how God and aliens just don't mix? Would you also tell her how there's no mention whatsoever of UFOs in the good book? Am I right? That's right. I know you personally don't believe in such things. Oh, don't be so sure, Joe. I believe there's a place in God's creation for an infinite number of things. The way I see it, the more fantastic the universe, the greater the glory of the God who created it all. Don't you agree, Dr. Chase? Oh, I'm sure the universe is quite fantastic, Father. But I'm also certain that when we get to the bottom of this, we're going to find out it's an entirely terrestrial mystery. And there you go. And how do you explain Mary and that other woman in L.A.? What other woman? I'm, uh, I'm working with a patient who seems to have had a parallel experience. Oh, really? Well, what does she say? Has she seen a little man? Has she seen their eyes? I'd rather not reveal too many details. I don't want either one of you influenced by the other. We still have more work to do. I know. There's a lot I don't remember. Wow. Uh, another... Hypnosis session would be helpful. I think we'll explore that in the morning. No. Tonight. Tonight. You know, I've been so alone with all of this. I want all of you to go through it with me. Relax, Mary. You're very, very relaxed. You're going to remember everything that happened. You're going to see it clearly, without fear, without anxiety. When I count to three, I want you to go back to that first time that you saw these men. All right. One, two, three.
How old are you, Mary? Seven and a half. Where are you? In the backyard. What are you doing? Me and Lee are helping Daddy in the garden. with us now. Oh, oh the, one of them is taking me away. Where are they taking her? Now these little ghosts, what color are they? Gray. Who's it, Mary? What? Do you see something? There's... There's these little, there's funny letters, something, on the wall. Will you take a good look at them? Because later I'm going to want you to draw them for me. Oh, it's cold. What's cold? Table.
you all right, Mary? Yeah. Do you remember a little boy like that ever? No. It's when they marked me. What do you mean they marked you? They marked me. Since I was a kid. This has been happening all my life. What have they done to me? What are they gonna do? Didn't think that rain was ever going to stop. Uh, we're really coming down. What do you think now, Doc? I... Uh, I haven't figured that out yet. Yeah, you know, I know you came out here to help my wife, but... I think it's me that needs a little help now. I mean, that thing told her that she was chosen like her mother, like my son. And if they can just turn people off like they did to me the night Timmy was hurt, then how am I supposed to protect my family? You were an artist. Oh, well, yeah, I wish. <laughs> ah, it's beautiful here. I can't stop thinking about last night, Neil. It scares me. That scar that Mary showed us. I was a little girl, too. If things have happened to me, well, I'm glad I don't remember. I think it's a blessing. Deserting them it scares me to think what might happen after we leave. There's just enough time. There's someone I want to stop and see. about that um, object we discovered, uh, the, the pellet. Yeah, that's right. Well, sir, I've 
I've come across some odd things in my day, yes indeed, but uh, I must admit that thing I found in Mary's nose, I mean, that, that was strange. <laughs> I, uh, I don't suppose you still have it. Well, my first instinct was to flush it down the toilet. I didn't see any point in hanging on to it. But then I had uh, second thoughts. And second thoughts are often the best, don't you think? I began with some simple tests using a scanning electron microscope to ascertain the structural form of the object. I discovered three minute but distinct lobes. The EDS revealed their chemical makeup is 90% carbon, 10% oxygen. We're dealing with a very advanced, highly conductive polymer, the likes of which I've never seen. So I decided to run a culture test to see if the pellet was a catalyst for germ viral growth. What is that? It seems that our object, under certain circumstances, goes from a dormant state to one of physical mutation. Quite extraordinary. It's as if it were trying to burrow into the sample dish. You said the pellet mutates under certain circumstances. What are they? It alters in a moist environment at a precise 98.6 degrees. In my estimation, it's almost as if the device was designed to flourish inside the human body. Will you still be needing it? Needing what? I'm sorry to say there's nothing left. A little while after the last test, it disintegrated right before my eyes. I took it to be some sort of internal self-destruct mechanism. It's clever and effective. Not a trace remains. Jane, do you remember what you told me about these? You said some people in the desert showed them to you. Can you tell me about the people? I can't tell you that, Doc. They said it would be better. Okay, then what about the desert? Hmm? Can we talk about that part? Yeah, 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 I guess I can tell you about the desert. I was stationed there. New Mexico. 73. Did anything happen in the desert? stand to think about it. How come you keep bringing that up? You know you want to tell me, Jane. What happened? Hmm? Tell me what happened. Most mental cases can't pinpoint the moment they've lost it. I can. It all started one night, about three o'clock in the morning, when I was standing in the graveyard watch at the back gate of the airbase. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
Come on, you're coming hey, with us, buddy. Let's go. Let's go. No, no, he, Let's go. Might, he might be alive. Ain't you gonna we'll help me, sir? Get him out of here. Someone gotta help me, sir. Get your help me. Let me help. 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 Let me Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Take down like I got some people. Listen, oh, oh, oh. I ain't done nothing no people. Take down this, they need help. They need to help. Wait a minute, wait a minute. They kept at me for three days. Until I signed that paper and said I was I was on something. Then they took me to the site. There wasn't anything there. Nothing. And the piece of metal you took off the craft? The one with the symbols on it? I never saw it again. Maybe you're right. Maybe, maybe I was on something. Maybe I am crazy. No. No, you're not crazy, Gene. done by a woman in Nebraska. She's never met you. She's never heard of you. She's never seen your symbols. She saw them inside a spaceship. Sit down, Doctor. Hold all calls, please. You're becoming involved with some questionable things, Neil. What exactly are you referring to, Stanley? This, um, lunatic fringe you're associating with. It's unbecoming a man of your position. I'm trying to help people. I am sure you're well-intentioned. But word is already starting to get around. <laughs> Just what the hell is that supposed to mean? Talk. Talk. In professional circles. Our circles. It's very embarrassing to have one of your own look so ridiculous. Get out now, Neil, for your own good. You know, I'll tell you something, Doctor. I am getting damn sick of all this sudden good advice. Who else are you talking to? I'm just telling you, as a friend, I'm doing you a favor. Yeah, well, keep your favors, Doctor. And don't kid yourself, we have never been friends. Fine. I'm ordering you to drop any and all discussions of these so-called abductions. Is that clear? You have enough on your plate without complicating things. I am well aware of my responsibilities. I hope so, Neil. And um, one other thing, that patient of yours, Gene Randall, is being released today. That'll be all, Doctor.
Ah, come in. <laughs> Leslie, how are you? I'm good. Ray. Hey. Uh, oh, here. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie, you look great. Must be that glow they talk about. <laughs> so how was Kansas? Uh, Nebraska. So isn't that the same thing? <laughs> Only to Californians. <laughs> Hi, Lee Holland. Um, sports night final. Right. Oh. Hey. <laughs> I don't know. All the men seem to know me. The women haven't a clue. <laughs> well, come on in. Come on. Hey. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you kidding. Leslie. Yeah, there's something you should know. I went to Nebraska to help a woman who's had some incidents strikingly similar to your own. I think it's important for you to realize that you're not alone. Um, Dr. Chase, <clears throat> I've changed my mind about those incidents. Oh? Yes, yes, I think, I think you were right all along. I think they were dreams. Anyway, uh, that's all in the past now. I can feel it. I'm sure of it. We're getting married. Oh, that's wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you. It's hard to describe, but uh, this baby has brought focus into my life. It brought Ray and I together. It's like it was a gift from God. Uh, have you set a date? No, no, not yet. But well, we're planning on doing it before the baby comes, to make it more proper, you know. <laughs> but as soon as we set a date, you'll be the first to know, I oh, promise. No. Well, here's to the happy couple and to the beautiful child-to-be. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Happy Leslie? Les, you in there? Paul! Oh. Oh, 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 
Thank you for coming. I'm Susan Goodbrook. Oh, Doctor. How is she? <sighs> They've given her a sedative. She's resting more comfortably. Emotionally, however, she's still quite distraught. And the baby? What happened? We're not sure. Everything was there. The placenta, the umbilical cord, the embryonic sac. But the fetus is gone. I think... She must have spontaneously aborted last night, fleshed the fetus, and then blocked the memory. But that's more your field, Doctor. Is your boyfriend here? Had to go back on duty. Said he'd be here the minute he's off. In the meantime, she keeps asking for you. You could have fooled me. What do you think it was? A lion tamer? Hmm. Well, based on your last exit, what? Maybe an acrobat. What do you teach, anyway? Anthropology. You want to enroll? Huh. Actually, I uh, came by to return a favor. Cajun. <laughs> it, it's hard to tell just what they are. Everyone thinks out of space because uh, we call them aliens. And who knows where they really come from? One thing I do know is that I'm sure they have no intention of landing on the White House lawn or appearing on Nightline. Okay, man, forget what they are. Where are they from? What do they want? Ask a hundred different experts and get 110 different replies. Exploration, curiosity. Salvation, spin a will. Take a choice. Come with you for answers. I'd have my head examined. If you want answers, Doc, come to my meeting tomorrow night. Meet the real experts, abductees. All right. But I have a couple of people I want to bring with me. The more, the merrier. Good to see you again, Doc. I knew you'd be back. But not uh, quite so soon. What turned you around? Finally opened my eyes. I'm Dan Blatt. I'm a golf pro. For years, I worked real hard at suppressing all abduction memories. Now that I remember, I'm scared to death almost all the time. I know they'll be coming for me again. They always come back. My name is Ruth Kennedy. I'm a housewife. And I don't think we should be afraid of them. I feel like the initial fear is on our side. An all too human fear of the unknown. Uh, my name is Margaret Hussey. I'm a stockbroker. I feel fortunate that they selected me. I think we're all really lucky, special. We've been chosen for a higher purpose. We should be proud of being marked in this way. Javier Perez, I'm a foreman. We're laboratory rats, that's all. Specimens. They've been manipulating my life since I was a little boy. And they never asked permission. 
They never once asked. You know what the hardest part is? The isolation, the ridicule, the self-doubt. Half the time you're wondering if you're going crazy. Half the time, everyone else thinks that you are. Yeah. <clears throat> How many of you were children when you were first abducted? You see, that's how it usually starts, uh, for most of them. Well, I asked uh, Leslie and Ray to come with me tonight because I thought the people in this group, more than anyone else in the world, would understand how they feel. You can talk to us, Leslie. We've all had to deal with a lot of pain. I hate them. They, they just come and take whatever they want. What doesn't belong to them. They took my baby. They took my baby too. That happened to my wife too. She blamed herself. Nothing I could say could change that. There was nothing I could do. Yeah, but there is something that we can do. I can try to help you deal with the trauma of what you've experienced. Integrate it into your lives. So you don't live with these feelings of guilt and fear. Yes, but... How do we stop it from happening again? How do we stop it? <laughs> Excuse me. Can I ask you? Oh. Is you Margaret? Yeah, yeah. Hi. Margaret has. Uh, Ray Brooks. Nice to meet you. You too. Yeah, do you know me? I feel a lot better about Ray and Leslie. This group's going to be very helpful. But I'm glad you changed your mind about us, Neil. These people need you. I'll be here every other Tuesday. I hear you'll be addressing an SBA conference tomorrow. How'd you know that? One of my colleagues from the university will be there. What will you be talking about? I know what I'd like to be talking about. Why don't you? Sure. You'd be trailblazing, Neil. No one in your position ever had the guts to speak out. It's a unique opportunity. People who come forth with new ideas are often called crackpots or worse. Then one day, the world catches up. Then they're called visionaries. Think about it. Good night. Good night. Our final speaker tonight is someone very close to me, a highly respected colleague at the medical center for two years and a dear, dear friend. A man whose paper on post-traumatic stress syndrome is must reading in the whole community. His subject tonight is the aftermath in adult life of childhood sexual abuse. Please welcome Dr. Neil Chase. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here tonight and to see so many familiar faces. Ladies and gentlemen, the treatment of adults who've experienced sexual child abuse is often buried so deeply in the unconscious that a patient will vehemently deny that it ever took place. Regressive hypnosis is frequently a helpful tool when trying to recover a buried trauma.
The, uh, the post-traumatic stress related to these events can manifest itself. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, with your indulgence, I, uh, I would like to shift gears and talk about something I have just recently become involved in. Uh, there are difficulties in broaching the subject. Yeah. I can't think of a way that doesn't sound as if I'm making a plea for open-mindedness. <clears throat> it began one night, not so long ago, when I did a favor for an associate of mine, and I took on a new patient. She came to me with a these people can't be dismissed. They can't be forced into one of our standard psychiatric categories. <laughs> Their dilemmas are unique and challenging. And they desperately need our help. I'm asking you to open your minds. Don't be afraid to believe. This is the most significant development in the history of man. Tell us something, Dr. Chase. If this is happening, why haven't we heard anything about it? I mean, where's the government in all this? The space people? Are you saying that this is going on and they don't know about it? They know about it. No, believe me, they know about it. Do some research. These things have actually shown up on radar. Then why are they keeping it a secret? I don't know. There are a number of theories about that. And what do they want? Now, I'm sorry. I have heard no explanations for any of these things here this evening. Because there aren't any explanations. Oh, God. I've been practicing psychiatry for almost 20 years. All my training, my instincts, my clinical experience led me in search of an acceptable psychological explanation for what I was hearing. My biggest fear was that I wouldn't find one. And I didn't. But ladies and gentlemen, there is no denying what I've seen. What's happening is real. You have committed professional suicide. You know that, don't you? No one will ever take you seriously again. Your name will always be associated with that laughable, misguided spectacle that you put on last night. And what's your point, doctor? You have embarrassed the good name of our hospital as well as myself professionally. As soon as I can prepare the papers, I am going to petition the board to see. Don't seat. bother. I resign. It hasn't been a pleasure, Doctor. I'm Dr. Neil Chase. Yes, sir. Would you follow me, please? I'm General Hanley. Thank you for coming. Mm. Do you care for a drink? No, thank you. All right, Maurice. Would you close the door on your way out, please? Have a seat, Doctor. I've been reading the transcript of your recent remarks to the State Psychiatric Association. I hear they cause quite a stir. But we don't concern ourselves with these screwball flying saucer stories that headline in the supermarket tabloids. As a matter of fact, we'd rather encourage them. But when someone like yourself gets involved, then we become quite concerned. And why is that? Your credentials, doctor. Your standing in the psychiatric community. From you, something like this cannot be so easily discredited. Why would you want to discredit it? Let me tell you a story. Entirely hypothetical, of course. Let's suppose that a group was formed many years ago 
to investigate a certain worrisome phenomenon. And let's suppose that the many brilliant men in this group could be counted on to come up with answers to such a mystery and could be counted on to keep their mouths shut until they did come up with answers. Were you one of these men, General? Most of those men would be dead now. As I said, it was a long time ago. The problem was that the men in this group couldn't find an answer. Oh, they knew there was something out there, all right. There's no doubt about that. Something quite extraordinary. But as to the who, why, what, where, well, they struck out. They struck out good. Do you like a cigar, Doc? No, thanks. So, the president who had formed this group made a decision to hide its existence, make it an ongoing black project. Untraceable, unaccountable to Congress, or even to succeeding administrations. And then, on the day that answers finally were found, the group leader was to march into the Oval Office and inform the President. That day is yet to come. That's a very interesting story, General. But no group, no government, no single person, not even the President, has the right to make that kind of unilateral decision. All right. All right, Doctor. Let's assume, for the sake of the argument again, that something is happening out there. What would you have us do? Should the President of the United States go on national television and say, my fellow Americans, we have evidence of a superior culture out there. They come from God knows where. Maybe from outer space. Maybe from some other dimension of existence. They are abducting our citizens on a regular basis, conducting experiments on them, collecting specimens of our ova, our sperm. They have been impregnating women and then later invading those women's bodies again and stealing the unborn fetuses for reasons we can only imagine. Uh, our world, my friend, is based on the premise of a 30-year mortgage. You and I can close our eyes and go to sleep at night because we're pretty sure that the world we know today will be there tomorrow and the next day and the week after that. So I repeat, Doctor, until the day comes when we know what we're dealing with, until we can give solid answers, the policy of this government remains, nothing is out there. It's just science fiction, the domain of a very rabid lunatic fringe. What's the point of this meeting, General? We want you to join us. Help us find the answers. We need people like you in this group. Now, Doctor. They would be willing to make you an excellent arrangement. And they will let you inside the door and show you things that will amaze you beyond your wildest dreams. Not if it means sticking with the party line. That's what it would mean. And I'm sorry, General. I can't help you. Now, unless there's anything else. You're being very foolish, sir. Perhaps. But that's the way I feel about it. Thank you, General. Dr. Chase. I'm afraid you're going to be a very lonely man. But you've already found that out, haven't you?
from Mary last night. She wanted to know what we're doing for Thanksgiving. They want us to come out. Huh? Did something happen? I don't know. She says things are a lot better, but I'm not sure I believe her. Do you want to go? Yeah, sure. I still can't help but think if I hadn't brought Mary to you that... You still don't understand, do you? I'm glad you came to me. But, Neil, your reputation... To hell with my reputation. That's some fastball you got there. Do you throw with the seams or across? With, I think. Ah. Well, next time, put two fingers across the seams. That way you get more movement with the ball, all right? Here we go. Right down the middle, baby. Hey! hey, hey. Whoa! See right three! Ha! Ah. Oh, Larry. Mmm, that looks delicious. Pretty. So do you love him? What? Because he's in love with you. It's as plain as day. Yeah, I like him a lot. But we both agreed to take it slow. Oh. Uh-huh. Right. OK, y'all, it's dinner. Dear Lord, uh, we give thanks today for our family and friends and this fine meal. And Lord, I pray that you watch over my family and protect them and keep them from all harm. We're giving our trust to you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, you got mine with y'all eat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to share, Joe. <laughs> Would you like How's it been going, Joe? Oh, I don't know, Doc. Uh, all right, I guess. Nothing's happened, has it? No, no, not since she left. Uh, I've been keeping a good watch on things, staying up all night sometimes. And I will tell you this, if they do decide to come back, I'm gonna be ready for them this time. Day or night, it don't matter. They try to mess with my family again, and by God, they're gonna go through me first. Joe Lee tells me that Mary had a miscarriage about four years ago. Yeah, yeah, she did. What happened? Well, Doc, it's not the easiest thing to talk about. It almost split us up. Uh, um, you know she had a booze problem at one time. Yeah. Oh, well, I was away on a trucking run when it happened. Uh, Doc Holt figured she must have tied one on and I don't know, fell down or something. Anyway, she lost the baby and that's when she quit drinking. And there it is. We had a light snow about a week ago. Stuff just evaporated right off.
come, Mary. Time has come for you to understand. She's so beautiful. <laughs> she looks like a little angel. Can't she stay with me? It cannot be. She could not live, survive, in your world. Oh. Oh, no.
Potatoes are great. <laughs> Thanks. Timmy, why don't you try a little toast on your jam there, huh? Mmm. Timmy, what's that little white square thing right next to your elbow there? A napkin. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hello there, sleepyhead. I thought she's gonna sleep through the morning. Is there something wrong, honey? Something happened last night. Timmy, go upstairs, son. No, I want him to hear this. I want all of you to hear this. Why do you think you're able to remember this so clearly without hypnosis? Well, I think because this time they wanted me to remember. They wanted me to be able to tell about it. You know, I said when he held my hands and he looked at me right before he sent me back. Well, when he did that, I felt this amazing, this burst of emotion. Just went right through me, through my insides. Like he, like, maybe he was trying to make me understand his feelings. And it felt like he was lots of things sad and lonely. But happy too. Happy and satisfied. I know he cared about me. And like maybe he was gonna miss me as much as I was gonna miss her. Whatever it is they're doing, it's not evil. I know that. I think that's what he was trying to make me understand. It's like they're using us for some important purpose. I don't know what it is, but I feel that it's for the good. I feel that. And I never felt that way before. Never. I know one other thing. What's that? That it's over. At least for now. Neil, take that road over there. I want to show you something. No. Come on, we've got lots of time. The plane doesn't leave for two hours. <sighs> what is this place? where we all used to come to Nick. Oh, not you. somewhere. Mary's child. My niece. And there are other children, too. 
Why do you think they created them? To start a new world? Maybe. Or to save an old one.